my birthday cake. So I just wanted to give a little bit of an apology because I <laughs> Let me show you. Wow, look at it. It is so cool looking. I think it's gonna be really delicious. And interestingly, the frosting turned out really weird. <laughs> and it looks kind of strange, but it worked out. And it's because I realized this when I was making it that this frog candle makes this kind of the perfect looking cake, even though it's a little bit weird looking because it's like the frog is sitting on the mud. And this is my favorite thing to do. I love having big, this is 100% beeswax. I need to take this sticker off, but oh my gosh, it smells amazing. I love getting gigantic 100% beeswax candles and making that the candle and the decoration of the cake. I did it for John's and Hadley's too. John had a big beeswax bunny candle and there's a whole bunny thing that goes on with John. So finding that candle was amazing. And then Hadley's had a skull and Hadley likes skulls and stuff. So, and I found this, this is a secret dragon. <laughs> My mom is the year of the dragon and we have a toad here instead, but I'm just going to say that I think instead of turning into a prince, if you kiss this frog, it's gonna turn into a dragon. I'm gonna show you how we made such an incredible, unusual cake. And I say we, I mean me. Okay, so the base here is dried figs. I'm just de-stemming them because the stems are really hard. Dried figs, dates, and sunflower seeds. And these are raw sunflower seeds that I actually soaked uh, overnight and here I'm just blending them in the Vitamix and when they're ready and in a nice paste I added in some of the dried figs and the dried dates and then I just decided to add the rest kind of as it was blending because that seemed a bit easier as the paste of the sunflower seeds was rather thick and so I'm just now adding raw cacao powder and a little bit of shredded coconut. And after I blended it, it became this really beautiful paste. And then I just added in some vanilla and some Himalayan pink salt, as well as some pure maple syrup to make it nice and sweet and delicious. And this is it blended. And now I'm just putting it into a uh, cake pan here and I lined the bottom with some parchment paper but while I was putting it in I realized hmm is this gonna stick to the sides so then I ended up lining the rest or the outsides with parchment paper as well and just carried on putting in all the mixture in the cake pan and then I just kind of made the top like a nice flat surface and then I chilled this in the fridge for about an hour maybe a little bit over an hour. And while I did that, I prepared the frosting. So here are some of my favorite unsweetened dark chocolate chips. And then here is some raw milk that I'm actually going to heat up in the pan. And then I just am going to add in some coconut sugar. So I'm just going to mix this together, let the coconut sugar get all melted in there and then I poured it over the chocolate chips. So this is the chocolate chips with the milk and the coconut sugar and then I wanted it a little bit sweeter so I added in some maple syrup just to give it a little bit more sweetness and when I mixed it together the texture was just so wonderful and creamy and amazing. And so once my cake was ready, I pulled it out of the fridge and I topped it with the frosting. And I just want to say that there was something magical about the texture of this cake. My mom's going to say what it was like, but the way that the frosting hardened on it actually turned out to be incredible. 
but if you're trying to make a regular looking cake this way definitely what happened to me is I put it all on here and then it started to harden and solidify and so I couldn't really spread it anymore because it got really the hard the chocolate hardened when it came in touch with the cold cake from the fridge so if I wanted it to be more evenly spreaded I think I would have just put a little bit on at a time so it didn't all cool down at once and here is our beautiful cake Wow, it feels so hard. This is so interesting. Okay, are bon you guys appetit. ready? Yeah. My birthday cake. It's like fudge. Mmm. It's a pudding cake. Wow. Is it flourless? It is flourless. Yeah. There's no flour in there. It's amazing. It's like mousse. Is it? Yeah. yeah, it's very close to what we would call mousse in the old days. But my ex roommate, Doug Bronick, that none of you know about because it was so long ago. Hey, he lived with me in Pacific. Cappuccino has something to say about it. And he became a master of flourless. It's like there's no. Wow, and the top is like trippy. It's like fudge. It's like a. Fudge wow. pudding cake. Fudge pudding cake. Huge success. It's like um, pudding on the inside and fudge on the outside. So it's a pudding fudge chocolate cake. I'm running late. Oh no, I'm running late. But I'm super freaking pumped because I got my new freaking iPhone. I had to uh, take them up on the offer to get my new iPhone with my trade in. Oh my gosh. I need gas and it looks like something just happened with my tire pressure. Oh, I hope we can make it. So pretty much I'm headed over to meet up with my cousin Colby. I'm running late. My tire thing just went on. I need gas and there's a pit stop I really wanted to make. Proceed to the route. <sighs> and it's raining. Turn right. Oh onto my gosh. Then I'm turn nervous. Right. Then turn left onto 44th Street. Do I have a flat? Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Why would I get a flat? At the light, turn left onto 44th Street. Okay. I hope we run into a gas station. All right guys, I gotta figure out what's going on and get back to you. <laughs> this is scary. I'm getting out. I'm gonna look at my tires. What's going on? Looks all right. All right, I think they're just low. But see, that little lit up sign, that means the tire pressure is low. We're gonna be okay though. <laughs> We're going for it. I think we have enough gas. And uh, if I see a gas station, I'll pull over. to at this light. I'm on the freeway right now. I'm headed to hang out with my cousin and there is this John Muir historical site that I really want to go check out and uh, I hope we have enough sunlight to do so. It's rainy 
and everything took longer and we've got some obstacles going on right now but hopefully it is all gonna be good and I feel a little bit hyped up because um, I drink a coffee and I have not been drinking caffeine so I feel super wired but um I've been constipated you know so it did it did its job it helped me but now I'm like ah I love not drinking caffeine when you take a break or like you stop drinking caffeine especially coffee in particular is what I'm talking about and you drink it again you realize how like intense and jittery and like it's intense on the system you just get desensitized to it when you drink all the time but I'm loving the rain. I freaking love rain. I wanted to check out the John Muir historical site today and show you guys around because John Muir is such an important person. He helped protect our national parks. Our national parks are such incredible nature areas like Yosemite, Sequoia, the Grand Canyon, and Mount Rainier. John Muir's writings convinced the U.S. government to protect these magical places. So he was America's most famous naturalist and he fought to protect the wild places he loved. These places that, because of him, we can still visit today. Well, we're just a bit too late. It is closed. So, we'll have to come back some other time, but ooh, look at that building. So I wanted to put air in my tires, but they said it's not working. So hopefully <laughs> we're just gonna be all right. We're gonna head to Colby's. You're gonna cut that out, I'm sure. How dare you! <laughs> Well, I had a great time watching a movie and having dinner with my cousin Colby. Now I'm driving home. Oh my gosh. Oh, the moon, you guys. Wow. That is spectacular. my 
friends, I'm happy to report that I'm nearly home and survived the torrential downpour on the freeway as well as my tires. I'm about to be home safe and sound. Hear that beep? <laughs> that is what we are about to go take care of and get some air put in my tires. Hi there. I have low tires. My light is on and I was just hoping for some air. Should I move my car? Where should I put it? No, no, just okay. Oh, it's okay? Just, just, you, if it's possible, wait in the car. Wait in the car. Please. Okay, thank you so much. All right, my friends, that wonderful gentleman has helped me out. And if you can see, no more light. How fabulous. After I took my car in to get some air, I decided to come out for a nice walk at the Berkeley Marina. I love the Berkeley Marina. It's a really awesome place to walk. There's different areas. There's one area that's more pathways and more grass, and then this is another area that I like to come. As you can see, there was tons of squirrels out today, and they're really brave squirrels. You can really get really close to them. Obviously, he was definitely hoping for some food and not a stick, but they were just everywhere today. I think because it was raining and they were eating bugs or worms, Worms really like to come out after the rain, but I've been coming to the Berkeley Marina for years off and on. Uh, this was actually one place that my dad used to come park a lot when he was living in his van. And this would have been over a decade ago. He would park his van here and then I would come visit him and I would get out of my car and go hang out with him in his van and he would cook us lunch. My dad loves to cook really delicious like Indian flavored tasty food. So it was always nice visiting him at the Berkeley Marina. I have one memory of visiting him. It was kind of a cold day, but there was a lot of sun out and I found him. He was in the middle of this grassy field, which they have since cut down, but he had a blanket like incognito. You had to like go through the trees and the grass was super tall and you never would have known there was people in there sunbathing. But there he was in the middle of the Berkeley Marina sunbathing in this tall grass. Seriously, no one would have known that there was someone sunbathing. Like he had little teeny shorts on, no shirt on. He had his hair up in a bun and he was all tan and he was like, Star, come here, look at this spot. And I was like, wow, this is a really cool spot. So the Berkeley Marina has a lot of memories and we go back a long ways. But today I'm just soaking in some sun, walking on the rocks, just really enjoying these beautiful clouds and the seagulls and the turkeys and the squirrels and all the wildlife and everything. A little nook in the midst of the city that's really nice to enjoy on a nice day. Feels really nice out here. So I just wanted to give a little bit of an apology because I recently said that I was going to be filming way more and doing different types of videos and 
some of you guys expressed in the comment section that you were really looking forward to a lot more content from me and then it's been over a week since I've uploaded and I hope to get this video out as soon as possible but I just realized through my plan of action of uh, putting out different types of videos that it just wasn't the right thing for my channel and so I'm ixnaying in the butt the wrong thing for my channel. I feel like I just recently read a story about someone who made millions like 16 million and then there was like a crash of the housing market and he lost everything everything he lost his girlfriend he lost all his money and he ended up living in his car and he had millions and millions and millions and living a plush plush life and then this called him to question his choices and really dive deep into himself and his spirituality and like become more connected to himself and realize that you know his whole life it was a grind of like just making money I guess I just say that because you never know what's going to happen in life and I feel like as long as you're listening to your inner guidance system as much as possible and just trusting yourself, it's not going to lead you wrong. Or it might feel that it does. You might get in some sticky, messed up situations that feel horrible. Um, but my experience of this, of being in so many, like, fucked up situations in life is that most of them all of them have positive lessons and have blessings in the end uh, and it might feel like shit and really uncomfortable going through it but after you get through it and when you look back on it like when you're way forward in a better place because life ebbs and flows it's like this you can look back and be like wow Thank God that happened, you know? That was such a blessing in disguise. And I feel like the work, uh, if you're on a spiritual path or just a path of self-development or just a path of loving yourself, we'll just call it a path of love, is that you can learn more and more how to be in the storm, in the eye of the storm. And be calm, because the center of the eye of the storm is a calm, still place. And that's possible. And I'm not there. Definitely not. Uh, but I'm working on it, you know? <laughs> it's a life's journey, a life's work. This is what it said. Truth reveals what is hidden in the light. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wow. I was like, wow, that is, that's deep. <laughs> yeah, what, so tell me what, you know, this is obviously it was, you know, given to my mindset, but if, what would that mean for, for you in terms of if you had to? So it makes me think like there's things that we might not see or experience. Yes, yeah. And the truth is there. And once you get like a download of the truth, then you see what is there. That's Where exact, it may have that, been hidden before. That is exactly right. Exactly right. You got it. You got Bingo. it. Bingo. Bunny, bunny understands. <laughs> bunny understands Bunny's message. <laughs> Bunny's no. <laughs> I'm just saying, when you come here and you 
We're about to head in and I just have to show you. I got the tickets. She's got the tickets. This ground is very sparkly. Isn't it? Fairy dust. Wow, fairy dust. So let's get in line here. Okay. Okay, I don't. Do you want one? It's like a, like a space station. <laughs> I feel like we're in a space station with all those lights. Yeah, definitely. We're at the Vienna Orchestra. The Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra. 